Welcome to another episode of uh, Optimized Builds. This time, of course, I'm going to be doing a, another um, DPR build. This time, we're going to capitalize on one of the monks' abilities for a change. The monks get martial arts die, um, which scales by their level. So it says a d4, then becomes a d6 of 5th level, a um, d8 at 11th level, and a d10 at 17th level. <clears throat> the usefulness of this is that it can, um, essentially, we can roll our, our, our monk die, our uh, um, martial arts die, in, in place of an unarmed strike or monk weapon. Um, this side changes you gain monk levels as shown on the monk table. Now, and then later we get um, the well, uh, Tasha just give us the dedicated weapon feature, which allows us to um, make a weapon that's more melee weapons count as our monk weapon. Uh, it must be simple or martial, we must be proficient with it, and it must lack the heavy and special properties. So the way we can abuse this is if a weapon has multiple die. Um, unfortunately, the, the first two that come to mind are <coughs> the greatsword and the um, maul, both which have the heavy property, so that's a no-go. Well, what else is there? Well, there is the two-handed uh, scimitar, but that has a special property, so we can't use that either. Then what's left? Well, we have um, Shadow Blade, which is a spell, but it is a weapon. And um, it is a simple weapon, so, so it would be pretty easy to make it count as a monk weapon. The only thing is, it's already a D8, which means we'd have to go 17 levels in a monk. And by that time, we can only get three spellcaster levels, which means that we're only going to be able to do 2d8 bumped up to 2d10, which we could just up take more spellcaster levels and upcast it, so it's not really worth it. Um, so, okay, well, then what are our options? Well, we, have, we haven't talked about natural weapons. Natural weapons can count as monk weapons, as per the rules. So, um, essentially we can abuse this because there's a lot crazier damage die with um, certain natural weapons. Not on any races, unfortunately, but if we can turn to an animal via wild shape, things start to get spicy. Okay, well, we obviously want to start by going into Moon Druid. Um, again, as a, as, a, as, a, as a first level druid, you get, um, you basically just get uh, druidic and then um, druid spells. <sighs> There's not too many concentration. There is a first level that is really helpful. I mean, we get Shillelay, but we're going to be using natural weapons. As usual, we're going to be going to an ASMR. This, uh, uh, is, you know, for that extra damage bonus. And, um, we want to have a high dex. It's going to be our, our best score. The thing is, uh, however, um, we, we literally just need decent dexterity and um, wisdom and then potentially charisma since the one hex blade div is always a great option. Um, we're going to be using the stats of the creature. I would say have decent cons. You can keep up any concentration. Um, otherwise, it's kind of up to you. There are some good, um, just general uh, uh, spells like Entangle, Earth Tremor, Fairy Fire, just ways to get advantage, um, and then some healing capabilities. But honestly, not really a lot that's going to help us. Then at second level, we get both our subclass and our um, Wild Shape. Wild Shape uh, as a Moon Druid means we get start as a CR1 or a lower creature. Um, and as a bonus action, we can uh, spend... Um, our spell slots to gain a d8 hit point per level of spell uh, slot expended. Which honestly isn't, is just a little less than Cure Wounds, so that's honestly not terrible, and it's a bonus action, so it's like 
healing words, but we're not going to be really using that that much. It just exists, so it's good to know that. Now, there is a question of what we can do, right? Because at this point, we're already getting CR1 creatures, which does give us quite a bit of options. Um, and then we could go 17 into Monk at this point and get the, uh, the 10s. But I, I want to try to go more into uh, Druid to see if there's any things that have higher CR that could be of use to us. This is because um, we can get more spell casting options and, and, and we have a little bit more wiggle room in, in the different um, levels we're going into. So we're going to start with that. We're going to have to go into um, more or more, at least six. Uh, into druid. So, uh, third level we get second level spells. Uh, there's spike growth. Um, we get uh, um, flame blade. That's not really useful to us. Uh, heat metal, but that does use a bonus action. And and then seven beasts. So there, there's a few there's a few decent options in here. Um, again, druid doesn't give us a ton of great spells in that regard. Fifth level, we get third level spells. Again, we don't get like spirit or anything with druid, so it's just like conjure animals, which is built isn't really about as nice could have like for a lot of things. Summon Fey, again, a great spell, but um, this isn't a conjure build. Uh, so it's kind of matter. And finally, sixth level, we can turn to second level creatures. Now, there's one specifically I want to focus on, um, and that being the Quizocotus. Now, um, they deal 3d6 damage um was their normal attack and then they deal 3d6 extra if they get 30 feet dive off that's not really part of their attack roll so that would stay um 3d6 regardless so the thing is though we can go rakados background and get haste uh from because uh, we are we have we're a um fifth level spellcaster, right? So essentially at this point, we can have enough movement to get more dives in and then the extra attack. So it's going to benefit us a lot, at least for this. Um, now then, uh, <laughs> we have to go at least 11 levels into Monk in order to get uh, our bonus to... Um, our, our martial arts side, right? So we basically have, it's gonna be 17 total, right? So we have three levels to spare. Two options for this, we can go one hex blade and two anything else. Um, normally I would say spores, right? But we're already going into Druid. Um, or we can go three into Echo, okay? So um, let's, Either way, right, uh, there's cards across each, right? So, um, options, what can we do with those two other levels? You could bump up two more in Druid to get fourth level spells. That would give us things like, um, not much. Honestly, we, we, we get shockingly little. We could go more to Monk. Um, again, this would just be a quality of life thing because essentially monks middle levels, like you get tongue in second, tongue of the sun and moon at 13th level. You, you get old proficiency at 14th level, but we won't be able to go into that. So really you might just want to go in for the ASI, um, or, or yeah, so you can go or two more into Druid for the um, NASI and then higher spell slots. So it's really up to you if you go Hexblade. But there's also Echo. Um, so there's, there's now let's, we're going on to, to Monk. Oh, damage report for sixth level. So we have Haste and then we have um, the Quasicultus, right? So uh, as our movement speed, um, we have, we have pretty solid movement speed. We can get like two to three dives in. Two attacks, that's only gonna be 12d6 plus two, plus four, um, which is going to be uh, 
42 um, plus 4, which is going to be um, 46 plus 6, which is 7, if we go over, 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 over 6, um, is just going to bring us up to 52, which is pretty good for 6th level. No damage before after getting Echo, that would be um, 18d6 plus 6 plus plus nine from ASMR, which is going to be um, sixty three plus six is sixty nine plus nine is going to be seventy eight and then um our concentration is in haste and that oh, this is only gonna be during incarn unleash incarnation turn so this this you really want to go more into uh, constitution. But then we move on to Monk. Um, in Monk, we get, again, we get unarmored movement. I mean, unarmored movement and unarmored um, defense, which are great things because we're not using any weapons. Um, we get Monk dies, that's not going to help us until later. Um, we get uh, Step of the Wind and, and Flurry Blows. Flurry Blows is the one we really care about. Um, and then we get, uh, essentially, moving on, we, into third level, we get to choose our subclass. Now, the question is, what subclass do we choose? Because there aren't a lot of options for Monk that actually increase our damage. Now, we're going to have, like, 11-ish levels in Monk, right? So, the question is, though, can we use... Um, Flurry of Blows, well, the thing is, our, our attacks with Flurry of Blows are going to be unarmed strikes, which means they're not going to be with the, all that extra stuff. It's just going to be the D8 or whatever modifier that is, right? Um, so we're going to have, we're still going to be using Flurry of Blows each turn to get that benefit. It's just not going to be as powerful as our main attacks. That being said, um, we are going to have, if it turns out five, five to six rounds, we're still going to have half our key points left to use for abilities. Um, we could go into Mercy Monk. This, this, is, this is a great option because essentially it's going to mean that um, when we go into 11th level, we can use the Hands of Harm ability, which basically at third level, Hands of Harm, when you hit a creature with an arm strike, you can spend one key to deal extra necrotic equal to roll for your martial arts type plus wisdom modifier. That's why we might want a decent wisdom modifier, right? It's only once per turn. Um, at Flurry of Healing and Harm at, at 11th level, which we're going to be going into, is going to allow us to use um, Hands of Harm without spending key, but it's still only once per turn. This is, again, just still a great way to increase our base damage um, without any resources, right? We're not going to get a capstone ability, uh, so we can't do anything crazy like Astral Self or um, Drunken Monk. We could go into floor, Four Elements because we get Fire Fists in addition to our normal attacks, right? Um, we have to spend a key point each time we deal fire fist damage uh but if you take a flask of oil it's just a basic item flask of oil says when you deal fire damage to a creature uh, that has the oil on them it deals five extra damage right so assuming the thing is that's gonna still end up as similar because we're only making two flurry blows attacks we have to spend a key point to do it each turn, which means you can only really do it once per turn if you want to keep combat going. So it's going to be that D amount plus five. So we can guarantee the f uh, the dice amount plus five. So we're going to guarantee the five damage, um, but it, like instead of lower wisdom, but it is going to take setup. So honestly, just that once per turn bonus is the best we can do with a lower level mug. So what then? Well, um, well, we uh, go one more to monkey get abilities to increase again. Constitution and wisdom are probably your best bet. Well, uh, we actually we do want to have decent decks because of our bonus action attacks are going to still use our decks. So we're pretty mad, which kind of sucks. But um, again, you don't have to go back on night. But uh, continuing on, um, we get uh, fifth level extra deck. So now we can finally make two attacks as the causal cotus. We can make one more echo, and then we can make two punches. 
which is pretty great. So let's see our damage report, right? Um, let's just say, so we don't have to go wisdom, let's just say we're doing um, fire fist, right? So we're making, we're doing um, two attack, three attacks with the Quasal Cultus and then four because of haste. So we're making, it's going to be, um, let's say we can only get three dives in. So 92 plus our level, which is uh, 14. So that's going to be um, 14 from ASMR add on to uh, 82, which is going to be 96. And now we have two bonus attacks. Um, our, I think at this point, from our belly score increase, we can probably get a five attacks. So that's going to be, um, yeah, because we can have, at this point, we can have three constitution. We know we can have five decks and two to three constitution. So not great, but it's, it's decent enough. So uh, we make those attacks, which two of them, so it's going to be uh, our, our martial arts die, because we only fifth level is going to be D6. So we can take the fighting stuff we want for a higher thing. So it's just, because we're not using anything else. So we'll take the, because we can always switch it out later during <laughs> an ace high. So a D8 plus five, and then oil. So that's going to be um, a D6 from our martial arts side, plus another five. 18 per attack, so it's 36, plus um, 96 is going to be um, 132. Um, and then, well, that's pretty much it. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, oh, it's only one attack that the D80 is added on. So it's actually uh, eight less damage. So it's going to be 128, um, which is pretty good for level 14. Level 15, um, or six level monk. <coughs> so we get another, we get the second feature, which in this case is either just more, um, more uh, abilities to use with way the four elements. So let's just look at other options we can take, right? Not a lot of them can deal damage. We get some burst damage options. We get hold, we can cast hold person at sixth level, which is the north wind. Um, we can, uh, we also get fist of the unbroken air, which is just a way to knock them prone and deal damage, which is always nice. <clears throat> um, and then those are going to be the best options. And then we also get Water Whip, which we can also knock them prone with. So there's a few great options for this that are really flavorful. We can remove a condition when we use our Hands of Healing, um, <laughs> which is basically we can heal uh, Martial Arts mod, Martial Arts Diet plus Wisdom modifier. Remember, um, uh, oh, and then we can also use our Hands of Harm to inflict the Poison condition which is a nice addition. Um, yeah, the old UA version had, if they were poisoned, we'd have to do like, way more damage, but it's fine. Um, seventh level, as a monk, we get evasion. Always great. Um, eighth level, another ASI. I want to boost that con. Ninth level, um, we get uh, <coughs> our movement is better. Um, we can go up to vertical surfaces and stuff now. Again, not too fancy. At this point, level 10, we are immune to d disease and poison, and our uh, unarmored movement is 20, which is going to get us a great speed, for, plus haste, right? So um, now, essentially, we, the, uh, we get level 11, which will give us um, our monk condition, which would give us free hands of harm or just more disciplines right or and we also get a, a d8 martial arts side okay damage report uh we're making we're still making four attacks as a base two attacks as a bonus but now all those attacks are boosted because our martial arts die is increased right so it's going to be um 12 d8 plus 12d6 plus um, 8 plus 20 from ASMR. 124 damage from our four main attacks. And as a bonus action, we're dealing 
um, a d8 plus 5 twice, so it's going to be um, 19 plus a d8 plus 5 from our fire, or uh, hence of harm, which is going to be an extra 10. It's going to be 28 more added on um, to our 124, so it's going to be 150 uh, in the 150 range of damage. So, that's pretty good. Again, um, for being such a weird build that uh, a sacrifices a lot of abilities and um, <laughs> it makes... Uh, oh, we also get five more another time because each of our attacks deal that extra five. So it's we're like high... 150s range but again we've done all, we've done better builds easily like this is like artillerist artificer tier we could do better well how do we do this well again like i said there's not a lot of better options for um higher levels but for low levels if we're only going to moon druid we can do a lot more now remember this means that we're going to have to go 17 into monk but we can we're going to get better subclass options. That being mainly Astral Self and Drunken Master. Now, Drunken Master um, says that if, and if there's a number, any number of enemies up to five that we can reach, um, we can hit with our Flurry Blows, which means we can make potentially five Flurry Blows attacks instead of two. Um, so we have, you know, extra attack, so it's two main attacks buffed from our um, from our martial arts die, and then five attacks as a bonus, but just our normal unarmed strikes. Or Astral Self, which at 17, they gain another extra attack. Also, Astral Selves deal um, once per turn, they can deal their martial arts die plus their wisdom modifier uh, as additional damage for their 11th level ability. So actually, technically, we could have gotten that in um as one of the options for <laughs> either mercy or fire monk but it, it doesn't really matter too much um oh it's just our martial arts sign not our wisdom modifier yeah empowered arms once on each turn we can hit a creature with our arms of astral self we can deal extra damage to the creature equal to martial arts die. um so it's not as good but Awaken Natural Self at 17 level is amazing. Not only do we get another extra attack team, uh, but we can also, it lasts for 10 minutes and we gain um, plus two to our class. So it depends, right, on how strong our main attacks are. Um, now remember, we don't have, we only, we're only a second level spellcaster at this point. We have one more level that's obviously going to go into Hexblade. Now more attacks with our obvious concentration option here being Hex, and then um, hex weight to Curse. Okay, well, let's look at the options, right? So first is um, the Dying Arcus. This uh, makes three attacks as an action already, right? So this is one where you'd want Drunken Master because we don't benefit from the extra extra attack. Um, these attacks don't deal a lot. Uh, we boost it up to a d10 as their main thing. So it'd be d10 plus two per attack and make three of those. Um, so that is definitely one option just in terms of raw uh, amount of damage attacks return. Wolf, um, 2d6 plus three, we'd bump that up to 2d10 plus three per attack, that's actually pretty solid for our base attacks, right? So it's certainly an option. Um, draft horse is slightly better. It would be, a, it's normally um, a D, 2D4 plus four, I believe, but we bump that up <laughs> to do 2D10 plus four, which would make that better than the wolf. Giant goat would be 2D10 uh, plus three as the base um, bumped up by our monk weapon but then we have a 2d4 extra from our ram attack. So things are looking better. 
we get even better with the Jaculi, which um, it would be a, with our monk 2d 10 as a base and then 2d 4 extra with our jump, but we don't get that plus 3, so it kind of evens out. Or, finally the best one, the more bounder, which is 4d 4 plus 4 bumped up by monk would be 4d 10 plus 4 per attack. Now this is definitely one where our astral self would really kick this up. So, um, we'd make three attacks from our extra extra attack, which means those base three would be 4d10 plus 4, plus 6 from Hexblade's Curse, from plus d6 from Hex times 3, right? So, each attack would deal um, 35, uh, approximately, 35.5 would be more specific, uh, per attack. 107 damage from those three attacks. Then we make two more as a bonus. So let's remember we have um, we're Astral Self, which means we get to deal our martial arts damage one more time. So we would hack on 20 plus a d10, which would be uh, 25 more damage, which would bring us to 135. And then we make two more attacks as a bonus. So that's d10 for each plus we'd, have a, we'd be able to have enough AI for five decks, um, plus six from x weights Curse, plus six from Hex. This would bring us all together to 172 damage. Pretty solid. <laughs> well, what happens if we do Dionacus instead, right? It's going to be um, 1d10 plus two plus six from uh, x weights Curse, plus uh, d6 from hex each time. That's three attacks with that. That's 51 damage plus 20 from ASMR 71. Then we make five attacks as our bonus. It's D <coughs> a D10 plus five plus six from Hexblade's Curse plus D6 from uh, Hex uh, is altogether going to be is 100 more damage. So it's going to be 171 total. Now I don't need to tell you that it's going to be much less if we do Astral Self um, for the Dionacus. But what about um, if we do Drunken Master for the Astral Self more Bounder? So we're doing 100 damage as our bonus because <laughs> that stays the same, right? Then we have only two main attacks, so it's going to be 44 plus 4 plus 6 plus d6 twice. 171 total plus 24 ASMR is 191. And then plus that extra uh, d10 is going to be um, 197, which is almost going to put us in the 200 range, which is like a lot of our um, deep air bells. Remember, no, no, this is all reliant on the, the fact that the martial arts dice per, per die, which is, again, a, a bit of a debatable ruling. But considering how hard it is this to actually get to that point, I would say... I would consider it fair game, but uh, that's just that's just <laughs> me as DM. It depends on your DM, of course. Um, but overall, we've turned something very interesting, that being a monk mudri combination, into this uh, viable DPR option. Uh, the only thing, of course, being is that for our main attacks, we're gonna have to use our beast stats, right? Um, more bounders actually have, we, our proficiency bonus still takes place, right? So we're still gonna have plus 10 with more bounder, which is pretty good. Um, but with, which is the build we want, right? But um, the Nyanakis is only gonna be plus eight, which is to hit, which is, Again, you know, but this is probably just as good to hit as a lot of our, you know, Great Weapon Master builds. So I'm, I, I'd say, I'd say this is pretty good overall. Thank you for watching. This is Sean from Dodeca Dungeon, signing out.